Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today our video about signs for learning musculoskeletal sonoanatomy. In this video, we have gathered as many as possible the characteristic appearances in daily musculoskeletal ultrasound images. Using metaphoric signs, several normal structures are being illustrated. We believe that the used names or signs will help junior sonographers easily imagine or recall the relevant standard scans. Of note, there is another video will show ultrasound of different musculoskeletal pathologies. Number 1. Honeycomb Peripheral nerves contain many nerve fibers grouped into fascicular bundles. Transverse scan of a nerve shows several hypoechoic bubbles representing these nerve fascicles inside the hyperechoic epineurium. This highly organized structure looks like a delicious honeycomb where nerve fascicles represent the tunnels for the bees. Its recognition might prompt the distinction from a tendon which is fibrillar instead. Number 2. Feather Muscle fascicles run parallel to the length of the muscle, fusiform muscles, or attach at an angle to the aponeurosis beneath muscles. Longitudinal scan of a bipinnate muscle shows its hyperechoic fibroadipose component branching within the hypoechoic muscular tissue. This pattern is very similar to the aesthetic structure of a feather with its central beam and multiple peripheral ramifications. Its recognition might facilitate accurate measurements of the muscle architecture. Number 3 Starry sky. The internal structure of a muscle consists of hypoechoic fascicles and hyperechoic perimysium. Transverse scan of muscles shows the physiological alternation of these two compartments. While the former corresponds to the dark sky, the latter forms the stars. Accordingly, the relaxing starry sky is commonly used to recognize a transverse scan of a muscle tissue, wherever present or needed. Its recognition might promote the differential diagnosis of normal versus pathological muscle. Number 4. Spaghetti Tendons are highly organized structures made of overlapping collagen fascicles and septa planes. Longitudinal scan of a tendon shows the physiological fibrillar pattern that is regularly aligned to multiple hyperechoic lines. Multiple collagen fibers arranged parallel to each other look like a bunch of spaghetti. Its recognition might facilitate the distinction from other tubular structures. In addition, because of fibrous or fibrocartilaginous tissue, their attachment sites can also appear in the shape of free spaghetti ends. Number 5. Mickey Mouse Neurovascular structures run together. Transverse scan of a vascular bundle shows three anechoic bubbles, similar to the sympathetic face and ears of Mickey Mouse. Of note, gentle compression can be performed 
with the probe to collapse the venous ears and distinguish the artery. Another simple way would be to use the Doppler for visualizing different steady versus versatile vascular flow patterns. The recognition of Mickey Mouse might avoid possible injury during neuromusculoskeletal interventions. Number 6. Bird Beak The supraspinatus tendon passes under the acromioclavicular joint and attaches it to the greater tuberosity of the humerus. With the shoulder in neutral position, longitudinal scan of the supraspinatus tendon looks like the bird beak whereby the acromion also corresponds to its head. The strong beak avoids the pathological cranial subluxation of the humeral head towards the acromion. Its recognition might indicate the presence of a normal tendon, supraspinatus critical zone. Number 7. Tire The modified cross position is a maneuver used to better view the superior and posterior parts of the supraspinatus tendon. The patient is asked to place the volar surface of the hand on the ipsilateral hip, and the anterior transverse scan shows the intact rotator cuff as a tire. When inflated, means intact covering the humeral head, it absorbs the shocks and avoids subluxation. Its examination is paramount for describing the width and thickness of a possible rotator cuff tear. Number 8. Hamburger At the elbow, the median nerve passes between the pronator teres and the brachialis muscle. When the probe is placed in a transverse oblique plane, the median nerve appears like an essential ingredient, cucumber, of a hamburger. Another cucumber presents the brachial vessels, the cheese resembles the intermuscular fascia, Recognition of the hamburger might be contributory when targeting spastic muscles with botulinum toxin injections. Number 9 Moon over house. The interosseous transverse septum between the bones of the forearm divides the muscles into superficial and deep layers. Flexor digitorum superficialis, pronator teres, palmaris longus, flexor carpi radialis, and flexor carpi ulnaris, the most medial one, form the superficial layer. During transverse sonotracking of the forearm, the ulna typically acquires a quadrangular shape resembling a house. At the same level, the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle resides superficially like a moon, illuminating it. Again, its recognition might be contributory during specific muscle targeting. Number 10. Full Moon The flexor pulses longus tendon passes between the superficial and deep layers of the flexor pulses brevis muscle. Transverse oblique scan on the volar aspect of the thinner eminence 
shows a hyperechoic round structure that is the flexor pollicis longus tendon among the surrounding hypoechoic muscles. It looks like the terrifying full moon. Its recognition might be noteworthy to assess the tendon morphology and vascularity. Number 11. Pyramid The greater trochanter is an important landmark when evaluating the lateral hip. Transverse scan shows the triangular hyperechoic shape of the greater trochanter similar to an ancient Egyptian pyramid. Its recognition might guide while navigating for its different facets as well as for ensuring the transition from the femoral shaft rather round in shape to the trochanter triangular shape.